up everyone, welcome back to Trailer Time. Uh, trailers have been kind of slow to come out recently, so we thought we'd talk about our favorite trailers of all time. Um, there are honestly thousands and thousands of trailers out there, and hundreds of great ones, so it's really hard to pick out our top five favorites, but let's just get right into it. I'll start. My number five pick is going to be the trailer for The Handmaiden, South Korean movie. Um, the background score almost punches you in the face with every beat, and it's really exciting to watch. So, I'm gonna go with the Joker. Or I guess it's just called Joker. Um, I, I don't know, it's it's funny, you'll find that like all of my favorite trailers are also some of my favorite movies, and probably half of my Christian all, but with this one, one, the dialogue is incredible. Like, the, the sound bites that they use of the Joker in it um, were great. They were purposely misleading. Like, I loved how they, they didn't really give you details at all about, like, how he became the Joker, but they gave you a glimpse into, like, the darkness that was going to be in the movie and what made it different from Joker movies of the past, um, which I really, really loved. I also loved the music scoring behind it, like... And then the, they do the, the weird dancing at the end, which was sick. Um, they kind of like made him look animalistic, which, uh, which uh, really did it for me. <laughs> All right. My number four pick is definitely going to be the teaser trailer to David Fincher's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I think this is an underrated movie, first of all. It's a good choice. good choice. But also the trailer, the teaser trailer at least, was such at a brisk pace. It was so exciting. I, I couldn't wait to watch this movie. The tension was high throughout the entire time. From beginning to end, you w were waiting to see what would come next. And that really made me want to watch this movie even more. Nice, nice. This one, for four, it was like a toss up because I wanted to go with a old war movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I love those movies. You wouldn't think that about me, but I really, really love well, I'm a big history buff. Um, it was between Dunkirk and 1917. I went with Dunkirk, yeah. um, strictly for the trailer. I actually didn't really like the movie Dunkirk, to be honest. Yeah, I, I uh, but the that. trailer was sick. Gave me everything I wanted in terms of like the bombing scenes, both teams. They did a lot of wide shots to show mm -hmm. just how many fucking people were like on that beach. Um, it was like really intense. Like if you watch like the later half, it was really intense. Um, that shiver that you kind of get when you like know somebody's gonna die, you get that kind of like at the end of that trailer, which yeah. really stuck out to me. Tension the, the entire time. You didn't know what was gonna happen. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. 100%. Exactly. I didn't know anything about Dunkirk. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so for my number three pick, this might, not, this might be kind of a dark horse pick, but um, this is also a movie that I really didn't like that much, but I loved the trailer. It's It Chapter Two. And I thought this was a great, great trailer from the creepy grandma from the beginning to the last oh, yeah. playing on with the, the background score to the slightly more intense score compared to It Chapter 1 giving it a more creepy feel. I thought it was so, so good. So that's why I was super disappointed with the movie because that trailer put, my, put the bar up so high. I didn't mind it. Like, it was just the acting for me was kind of off. Yeah. But, like, the, I think the, the writing was, like, kind of... Although the ending was, like... Compared to the know, first one, it, I, I think it was not as good. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is this, is this, he's an alien? Like, what the hell? Anyway. Yeah. Um, that's a good one, though. That, that, that grandma scene was crazy, bro. I know. I was like, oh, that grandma just a scene was grandma. Nuts. The scene where she's, like, naked and, like, crawl, like and then slithers the back. After, oh, my God. Bro, I was so was creeped out. I was like... I thought she was gonna die. That was crazy. That was one of the scenes I was looking the most forward to in the movie too, just because it was they played it so well, like zero background music, just the grandma Jessica Chastain, and then you knew something bad was gonna happen, but you didn't know when until you saw the picture on the wall yeah. of the actor that plays. I, 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 was, I was like, was done so done so. game over. I was done so. That shit was hard to watch. All right, my my number three. Uh, I threw in this is like comedy, I guess. I went with the Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. Big Leo, my guy. Yeah. Oh man, he killed this movie. I mean, the trailer was dope because, like, when you want, when you go to see a movie like this, I know what it's about. Like, it's money, women, drugs, sex. Like, you know, it's like that. And they gave you every single one of those things, <laughs> like, over and over and over again. Oh yeah. And then when you rewatch, when you rewatch it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you rewatch it after you've seen the movie. 
you're like, those are also the hypest scenes of the movie in terms of like that stuff. So they did a really good job. Then they scored it with like that. I forgot what song was it? the Kanye. It was a uh, the Watch the Throne song. So it was uh, like hype. Yep. Yep. Um, I forgot which song. What the song's called? They'd probably yeah, be good man, friends, Jordan was... Belford and Kanye West. If they met, yeah, that's right, that's they'd right. be great friends. That's a great one. Great trailer for a great movie. I was not yes. expecting a lot from that movie when I went in, but fell in love with it. So I was really yeah, happy. With cult that. classic, bro. I think Low key, is. a big cult classic. Yeah. So my number two pick. Um, I had to put a comic book property on this list, and that was probably the hardest choice to make because so many great ones. You know, there's Guardians of the Galaxy, Dark Knight and Rises. There's Avengers One, Iron Man. So many. But I had to go with Avengers Endgame because, and I'll say this a lot on this channel, trailers that give too much away have failed at their job. This trailer 100%. gave nothing, nothing away. I knew nothing going to this movie. I was so confused what it could possibly be about. It was masterfully done. I literally could not say the words, whatever it takes, without, you know, really dramatic, pretending like I'm Captain America, thinking of that trailer. And the music, so great. Oh my god. It just elevated this already, well, it's like an, it was a event in cinema history to so much more. I thought it was so good. It only made me more excited. Loved the trailer so much. Um, I mean, bro, the Russo brothers, if you really go back and look at some of those, not even just the Avengers, but like that, that Marvel era, mm -hmm. not only like the trailers, but the suspense that they did leading up to all the movies, no leaks. They, None of that. Those they guys did, are, yeah, they did a really good job. job. And nowadays, it seems really almost really impossible for leaks not to happen. My number two was, and actually, it's crazy. Um, when I was re-watching trailers for this, this was the one that gave me the most like emotional feel. Mm -hmm. I went with Jordan Peele's Us. I mean, that almost made my list. I was so close to making the list. How did it, was, it not? It was dude? so good. I just I couldn't. Know. I just couldn't take anything else on this list. They, that I was thinking about that remix playing to every beat of the trailer for so long. It was so Gosh, long. dude. Man. So and good. like, nothing. I mean, he, he I was, because when you really watch the movie after and you learn about like where there's they come so from and all that stuff, yeah. you're like, oh, there's so much to this movie. You just think it's like, you know, a scary movie. Nah, dude, there's like so much more to this movie. And shout out to Jordan because like, <sighs> from opening scene to the end using the dark overcast on everything made it even better like even when you rewatch it you don't really see that it's that it's the people mm -hmm. that are, like it's them you kind of get like it's mostly like figureheads and then you don't get all the like the other details about like where they come from whatever i mean that dude did a, a master of this trailer this was this was one of the hype movies um i'd ever been to also beyond like um avengers just because get out success yeah. Yeah, Jordan Peele's one of my favorite directors right now. Get Out and Us were two back to back. Two, two back to back. He's already yeah. crazy. And I thought he, like, I was really surprised with Get Out just because, like, oh, he does Key and Peele. Like, let's see what he does with, like, a horror thriller. And he did a great job. And I think mm -hmm. after watching those movies, I'd go back and watch Key and Peele, and you could see some horror elements in almost every single video that he would use. Yeah. No, so that's go back crazy. and watch the uh, um, Tito Ortiz sketch from Mad TV with Jordan Peele in it and you're gonna see like an actual genius in, in both comedy and then also yeah. just like so like I'm writing. glad for him whatever his next movie is I'm gonna be alright so for my number one pick had to think really long and hard about this one Ragnarok I actually don't know what this is for a while my number one pick also one of, one of the best movies I think has ever been made is for Inception okay when I watched this trailer, man, I was so confused, but I couldn't help be sucked into whatever world Nolan was building. Um, the background score, Hans Zimmer is a legend. It only elevated this already hype masterpiece of a movie to something more. The locales they used were so great. I was like, how are they gonna connect this urban, urban area to the snowy mountain to like this decrepit old like skyline falling apart and how are dreams involved like I, could, I couldn't even wrap my head around it I was it, it made me ask so many questions and I wanted every single answer and I think that was a great part that was a great thing that trailer did I'm copping out on this one <laughs> like I know this isn't the best trailer of all time but this is my favorite trailer of all time 
because of the anticipation of the movie, mm-hmm. um, the people in the movie, obviously, the storyline, wrapping up the trilogy, like, dude, The Dark Knight Rises is the greatest movie trailer of all time. I don't want to hear it. I think you are going to hear it. And You're movie. definitely going to hear it. Well, not movie, Dark Knight. I don't want to hear it. Let me tell you something right now. If you watch that trailer, every instance of that movie, it, or that, excuse me, that trailer is Batman dies. But in like a beautiful way to where like as a fan, you're like, I want, like, I want to see how. Bane, the way he introduces Bane, bro, is incredible. Mm-hmm. And then the way that they tie that in the movie introducing Bane in the opening scene, son, Ooh, forget about yeah. it. The dude is incredible. Yeah. Like the, the broken mask scene, um, the the Anne Hathaway when she's like I don't know or whatever to like is he dead I mean just, like everything about that just scream this is gonna be the this is the only way that there can be a villain better than the Joker and like I think it's it's lost that sometimes you don't realize that he had to do a movie after the Heath mm-hmm. Ledger Ledger Joker movie. Yeah. And it introduced it to the public after like a what was like two year hiatus something like that. Yeah, so I think like, he did. This is incro- I think he did Dark Knight, then Inception, then Rises, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. There's a family. Wait, yeah, actually, that does make sense. Yeah. I mean, man, it's so, like. Although I will say, if I have to knock them, like there had to be another name they could have gone with <laughs> than the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> like, That's fair. Like, I mean, I think that was at least their worries. But, yeah, I mean, I agree. That was also a great trailer. Also, one of the ones I racked my head around if I should put on this list. I mean, at the end of the day, I think we can just agree that Christopher Nolan makes great trailers for great movies. Oh, man. Do you have a um, bonus or, like, a just honorable mention, just just missed the list? Ooh, just missed the list. Um... One that I really liked that no one else really liked was the trailer to Mission Impossible Fallout, the latest Mission Impossible movie. And I was really I, rewatch the trailer, and you'll know what I'm talking about. They used a great song in the background. You'll notice that I talk about the background score and music for almost all of these, just because I think that's one of the most important parts. It's super important. Exactly. It's so important. Because there's only so many handful of scenes you can use, and you need the music to elevate it even further. But the song was great. It was like a one-two punch. My favorite part of the of that trailer is when the, is the scene where Henry Cavill is locking his fists when, um, when he like knocks out his fists to get ready, and like it's it was a, the beat of both fists hit right on the money. It was so good. I really like that trailer. I'm gonna go with the Revenant, mm-hmm. uh, not because of Leo, or or because I like the movie. Just because the trailer I thought was really, really, really good. Like. Mm-hmm. I, I, I actually had no idea about the movie before it was coming out at all, really, um, until the trailer dropped. And then I watched the trailer, and I mean, granted, I wasn't like, you know, it's not, they gave an Oscar, but it's not like the best movie he's ever been in. But damn, dude, like the the, bear, the beginning of the bear scene, like oh, yeah. the cold, like clown classic, like mountain man type mm-hmm. stuff. Like, I don't know, I just like that. It gave me like weird, like if you watch some of the, um, those game if you basically if you watch any of like the Game of Thrones episodes with like Jon Snow out actually in the wilderness, uh, yeah, like yeah. that was the vibe that you get. Yeah. So I love that. Nice. Honestly, I could we could make this a top hundred tra- trailers list and we'd still be have so much to talk about. That'd still be hard to do. Oh a thousand percent. Yeah. I know. So but you know what we should do? Least favorite trailers of all time. Let's get on these fools. All right, yeah. That's Cook them idea. up. Monique. There's plenty Cook of bad ones. Up. I've been saying there's so many good ones. There's plenty of bad ones out there. So next video we're going to come out with is going to be the worst top five worst trailers. Get ready for that. Do your research. 